And then, of course, we've got news here courtesy of um, Sky Sports News with Eric Ten Hag. Really kind of doing my nutting at the moment. I really hate it when he talks to the press, to be fair. Um, he talks absolute bullshit. And I'm going to give him a bit of a bligh here because I think he's just trying to save himself. He's literally drowning. So he's saying anything. He's just waffling. But this headline really made my blood boil. It says Manchester United boss Eric Ten Hag claims injuries have been the key slump and says owners will show sympathy. This is absolutely diabolical thing to say really to be honest because part of the reason why we have so many injuries is because the manager refuses to rotate players he picks the same what 12 15 players every single time run them into the ground which obviously led to injuries and then um refuse to rotate and then of course more injuries right so what the fuck do you expect absolutely nonsense here um it says um the red devils had one da, 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 da. let's see what he says his quote here when asked to pinpoint the overarching reasons for united's poor campaign ten Hag told reporters the injuries which is done because every other team in the league has had injuries right every team in the league has had injuries also some injuries but mainly the injuries that hold us back in the process in january we have a lot of players returning so we then our levels can be higher the two players who are probably the main ones who are injured out now who probably would make a difference are casemiro and probably sandra martinez but before casemiro got suspended or got injured he wasn't really pulling up any trees and the same with Alessandro martinez right he was obviously carrying an injury who might have not helped his form but let's not act like those two players are you know crazy crazy world class and they're going to change things for us especially if they're coming into a team that's already struggling so again we're doing the thing that united always do right we're doing the thing that united always fucking do where we always kind of wait for a savior so before it was luke shaw when he was injured and now all of a sudden it's going to be sandra martinez and fucking casemiro when they come back everything's going to be fine it's like no um he continues he says definitely David Brailsford will see we have problems. You want to build on the last result, but we have to change our striker. So he's now suggesting that Brailsford is going to have sympathy for him because of this injury. It's not true. If anything, your job should be on the line and should be in question because of how poorly and inconsistent we've, because of how consistently inconsistent we've been over the season. That's basically where you're not going to, you're not going to ever sack Ayrton Hall because of one result. You're going to sack him because of a pattern of inconsistencies. It's always one step forward, three steps back. And that's going to, what's going to end up costing him in his job, especially when it comes to his favoritism of picking certain players over others, which is absolutely crazy to be honest, especially when you consider most players are basically on the same level. Honestly, I can't stand Bruno Fernandes. I can't fucking stand him. I can't stand him. He's so fucking average. So shit. Um, let's continue here. It's clear that the results are very disappointing, says the Dutchman. We should have invested more in these moments. We created less before half time. We didn't do enough. The second half was better. He always says this. I don't know what game he watches. We didn't play well in the second half at all. I thought Nolan Froze played much better than us in the second half. If anything, we probably played a lot more better in the first half in terms of having more control of the game. I don't know what game he fucking watches. We are losing the game by a goal and you saw the fight in the team nonsense we had our chance the football in the second half was better we kept believing and going until the end but of course the result this we are disappointed the players are not happy with this result we have to do better we haven't played in the same team in a row we had to change again so every time we have to swap our team that doesn't help our support there's routines of the team and it explains why it's so inconsistent no it doesn't to be honest if anything that that explains poor coaching the fact that we don't play a certain way, um, regardless of who plays, is a really startling, uh, you know, reflection of how poorly this team is coached. Because I don't understand what they do in training every single week. Because he says we have pattern and routines. What's the pattern and routine of our attack? Do we have a particular pattern and routine? Do we play a particular way? We got Hoyland up front sometimes playing. Do we cross the ball into him for him to run onto? Do we pop the ball over the top for him to run onto? Do we thread the, the, ball, through, the ball through, um, you know, defenders for him to run onto? Not particularly. Do we pass the ball out to the wings? Do we attack with our flipping attacking midfielders? Not really. Like, what are these patterns of play he's talking of? I don't know these patterns of play. If anything, we have more of a defensive shape and solidity. When it comes to attacking, I don't really see these patterns of play. That's probably part of the reason why myself and others are probably a super ten hog out because he sold us a dream when he was at Ajax. He's the greatest manager of catfish of all time. You know, he sold us a dream of this fast attacking, free flowing football. Then he comes to United and he's pragmatic um, and he's, you know, bending or changing his philosophy based on the shitty players that we have. And then, you know, and then we're also not winning. So it's one thing for playing terribly, but we're, we're playing terribly and we're not winning. It's just, no, no, 
you can't I'm not accepting that it continues we had nine different partnerships in the back it doesn't matter as well the fans don't want to hear this they want to see us winning and that is what we have served them but that's a problem though I think he's having he's misunderstanding what's going on because I don't think any United fan with a brain is sitting here thinking that we should be winning the league None. Well, no one's thinking that or even cha challenging for Champions League. We want to just see us, you know, evolving step by step, season in, season out. We want to see us flipping, you know, maybe at least playing an attacking brand of football and maybe developing every single season. That's basically it. Incre incremental kind of progress. This whole idea that we need to win at all costs is a nonsense because we're not winning and the winning at all costing, we've seen that happen before when we were under Jose and people didn't like that either, right? The football under Jose, especially towards the end, was kind of, was kind of shit, but we were still winning quite a few matches then. Um, when asked if you would like to talk to Ineos group, Ten Hag said, it will happen, no doubt about that. We'll work together to set high standards, of course, for achievement and structures. We'll talk about that. I don't think he has any right to have that conversation personally. I feel like he's, he should be playing for, he should be managing for his future. Maybe there's no need to get rid of him now because I don't want an interim manager. I don't want, you know, Fletcher and fucking Steve McLaren being managers and then going, having, because our fan base is fucking delusional and deluded and fucking too romantic. We have Fletcher and whatever and, you know, Steve McLaren be interim manager after Ericsson Hall gets sacked. They go on a good run of like five game win streak or something and all of a sudden the fans are calling for Fletcher to be at the wheel. I don't want that. I'd rather we just, dog it out with fucking Ericton Hogg finish as low as we can you know get him out of the club at the end of the season get those players out at the end of the season and then kind of you know go back to fucking drawing board and figure out who's the coach that we want for the next project and how we're going to do it blah 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 that's what I'd rather do I'd rather just us all suffer with Ericton Hogg for the time being than get an interim that's garbage no interim for me personally I don't want that shit um anyways Anyways, and then of course, Gary Neville says here, Maynard are back to what they are, inconsistent and awful. They walk off the pitch, a defeated bunch. Maynard fans behind the goal will go off disappointed. Yeah, but hey, what can you do? Absolute bullshit. No surprise there. No fucking surprise. And then of course, um, I have to give a big shout out to Anthony Langer. Um, I felt like, you know, as much as I wasn't the biggest fan of his, it's, you know, it, it is true that he didn't really get a fair shot like a lot of players in our team who aren't starters. Um, if you don't start for this United team, especially under Ericsson Hogg, you might as well not exist, really. Um, he doesn't really, you know, focus on the players that he doesn't trust, really, to be honest. They're not really in his purview in the slightest. And especially when you can, when you, but when you compare Anthony Langer to an Anthony and you think of what we spent on Anthony, um, it really does make you question you know, why the board or the team decided to go for Anthony or stick with Anthony and not, you know, try and maybe persist with maybe developing Ilanga. But Ilanga said um, post-match that it was personal for him. At United, I'll read some of the comments here. Nona Forest recorded a 2-1 victory over United. Um, he was causing Diego that a lot and Bafra Varane in particular constant problems and it was clear that the Swedish international was trying to prove a point to the manager who sold him. Um, speaking to NBC, the Swedish winger opened up about a tough season last year for the Red Devils as Ten Hag preferred Jadon Sancho and Anthony, um, Anthony over the academy graduate. Last season wasn't easy, he said, right? Um, for me because I'd play five to ten minutes then I wouldn't pay for ten games then it'll be in and out this game was kind of personal for me to prove that I'm capable of playing at the higher levels Elanga was certainly proving that blah 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 um, at high levels a assist with City ground means that he has been involved in or either scored or assisting in ten of the of the East Midlands side goals so he's been involved in ten of the goals so far ever since he's gone you know he's, he's become a lot he's playing a lot more further up front sometimes a second strike sometimes on the wing and he's clearly pulling up a lot of trees but I feel like this statement is very indicative of the current mood of United I don't feel like there there's probably a lot of players in our squad who feel the same way who feel like they probably don't get a fair crack of the whip um a good example is probably fucking donny van der beek for some reason he can't even get a single minute on the pitch but scott mctominay is always the first option to come off the bench to play which is horrendous because apart from his running and apart from his kind of fluky ability to score deflected goals in the box he's terrible with the ball at his feet he's a horrendous midfielder maybe one of the worst defensive midfielders i've ever seen play for united but he always consistently plays so imagine 
playing for a club like that where you know you're better than the other players playing but you don't get a chance to show it and if you do play you play once for five minutes and if you don't impress and you don't play like fucking Maradona you don't play again and that player plays before you all the fucking time it obviously doesn't help with your confidence and obviously leads to a weird probably imbalanced feeling in a dressing room where people feel like the places aren't earned really on merit and they're always a bit of favoritism going on there so um big up Anthony Langer really am happy for him to be honest um and it kind of goes to show that sometimes if you're a player because I'm sure he, if he wanted to he could have probably stayed and maybe you know maybe he's rotted at the bench and earned a nice little salary but at his age as well in his stage of development he's still got another big move in him do you know I mean he could pull up a lot of trees at Nottingham Forest and still end up going to another top four club later on in his career two to three years down the line so it's good to see that he kind of betted on himself and now he's obviously reaping the rewards of it so big up Anthony Alanga big up Anthony Alanga